So hello everyone and thank you for joining us today for the third of our China Ready webinar series. I think you're all getting to know me now. <laughs> My name is Laura Markle and I am the director of the Atlantic chapter of the CCBC. This six part series of webinars is focused on providing Canadian companies with the tools and understanding they need to be able to take on the China market. And I think from what I can see from the attendees today, we've, we've got a regular group that are joining us now for this third interesting uh, session. We know that um, if you were with us, and I think most of you were uh, last week, Sarah Kudalakos, our CCBC Executive Director, kicked off the series with a presentation on 10 Mythbusters on China and business, Chinese business culture and corporate gift giving. And for today's webinar, we will be discussing how to get your product certified and ready to export to China, simplifying the import and compliance process. Today's presentation will provide an introduction to China's import regulatory system, as well as a safety supervision system for agri-foods. This presentation will also highlight certification for agricultural and industrial products, an overview on the requirements for Chinese organic certification, China's compulsory certification, CCIC pre-shipment inspection results as recognized by Qingdao Customs, as well as CCIC's top quality plus FTZ fast moving program to help acceler accelerate your exports. And today it is my pleasure to introduce to you all Ms. Minyan Li, who is manager, managing director of the China Certification and Inspection Group Canada, who will be presenting today, followed by a Q&A session. Mr. Henry Zhu, uh, department manager of the inspection department at CCIC Canada, is also uh, with joining um, Ms. Li, who will assist you in uh, responding to some of your questions during the Q&A session. But first, before I, we move on to Ms. Li's presentation, I'd like to first uh, tell you a little bit about her extensive experience as an executive at the CCIC, where she worked for branches in China, Europe, and North America and dedicated to Chinese trade regulation, consulting and inspection services for more than 30 years. Ms. Li obtained an MBA from Fudan University as chairman of the Association of Chinese Investment Enterprises in the Netherlands. She has been recognized by the Dutch government for her contribution in foreign direct investment. Her commitment to improving trading services and support in support in marketing benefits overseas clients as they enter and expand into the China marketplace. And I'm not sure how familiar everyone is with the CCIC, but let me just give you a, a quick overview so you understand just how, um, how important this organization is to the process of exporting to China. They are an ex independent third-party certification and inspection organization dedicated to providing inspection, verification, certification, and testing services with accreditation by General Administration of Quality Supervision inspection and quarantine of the People's Republic of China, certification and accreditation administration of the People's Republic of China, and China National Accreditation Service for Conformity Assessment. Developed over 30 years ago, CCIC has become a comprehensive one-stop solution provider for international clients in the fields of quality, safety, health, and environmental protection. Now, finally, before we get started, I think you're all getting used to this, but just a quick housekeeping note, we are recording this session. And while we will have you on mute, um, we absolutely wanna make sure we take as many questions as we can from you. So at the bottom of the screen is your Q&A function for us to try to answer your questions as best we can. If, if we can't do a fulsome response to you today, uh, I know that uh, Ms. Lee and Henry will be very keen to help me in responding to those uh, after this this presentation. So um, over to you, Ms. Lee, for your presentation. Really looking forward to it. Thank you. All right. Hello, everyone. Bonjour, Madame and Monsieur. First of all, I would like to congratulate CCBC for the successful organization of this webinar, getting your product certified and China ready. I think it is really a very good topic for exporting your products and doing business with China. You need more about the situations and the regulations. 
So it is my great pleasure to introduce about the Chinese import license and the compliance process. Let's make it more simplified. Over the last few decades, Canada-China trade has expanded, creating a substantial economic relationship between the two countries. China is and will remain Canada's second largest nation two-way trade partner after US. China will be crucial to Canada's economic future over the next 50 years. Since December 2018, the Canada-China trade relationship has been fraught with complications. Canadian exports to China fell by 16% in 2019 after four consecutive years of growth. However, some provinces and industries still quietly flourished. Even the value of pork or beef exports after months of uncertainty were higher 11% and 20% respectively in 2019 when compared with 2018. For canola oil and the meal exports, according to Canola Council of Canada, they also have continued through direct Canadian channels and by other channels, right? In spite of the coronavirus pandemic, Chinese imports are still strong. There is some industry optimism. It is predicted that Canadian exporters will undoubtedly face difficulty moving forward. Based on the exporting data, the top five fields of products from Canada to China are forested products, every food products, metals and minerals, consumer products, and also motor vehicles and parts, increasing rapidly very recently years. So national media coverage of Canada-China trade concentrated largely on industry-specific export barriers. But currently, there is no nationally uniform settlement towards China. China trade optimism would likely differ between canola farmer from Alberta and a lobster fisherman from Nova Scotia. It depends on the market requirement and how you are familiar with Chinese regulation and the laws together with practice experience. Briefly speaking, China's import process mainly consists of three parts. Pre-import access inspection on entry, and the supervision after import. The two main questions faced by the exporter are how to ensure that the products are qualified to export and allowed to enter, and whether the products met all the requirements by Chinese regulations and the standards. So, our businessman, or manufacturer, before making contracts, you should make sure and know the framework of Chinese regulation and laws for imported products. You should have a general idea and the pictures before you do. This structure shows that there are four levels of Chinese regulation and the laws. The highest level is a national law issued by National People's Congress and its Standing Committee. 
such as the latest food safety law issued and implemented on December 29th, 2018. The second level is administrative regulations issued by state council, such as regulations on the implementation of the food safety law of the People's Republic of China, announced by state council order to be taken effect on December 1st, 2019. The third level is regulations of practice issued by ministries and the commissions of the state council or governments of provinces, autonomous regions and the municipalities, such as measures for the administration of food production licensing promulgated on January 2nd, 2020, very recently just this year, by order number 24 of the State Administration for Market Regulations. The fourth level is standards. Some of them are mandatory standards, SGB, you know. Some are reference standard, GBT. For example, food safety standard issued by the Administrative Department of Public Health belongs to mandatory standards. It includes the limits of pollutants and other substances harmful to human health. The variety, scope of, of use, and dosage of food additives nutritional requirements for primary and secondary foods for infants and other specific groups. The requirements for labels, labels and instructions related to hygiene, nutrition and other food safety requirements. And also hygienic requirements for food production and marketing quality requirements related to food safety and also food inspection methods and procedures and other contents that need to be formulated as food safety standards. This is the whole pictures of the laws and the regulations. Now, you may have a brief framework of Chinese regulation and laws for imported products. Next is our main topics. I would like to detail explain the legal and the regulatory requirements for some of the Canada's most popular exports, like agri-food products, organic products, and the industrial products. Also, I will introduce our latest cooperation agreement with Qingdao Customs and how we can assist Canadian SMEs to accelerate exporting to China. As you know, Canada has a rich variety of agri-food products for export. Each of the Canadian provinces has its typical agri-food products, such as grains, oil seeds, and the cattle from prairie provinces, fruits and dairy from BC, hogs from Quebec, wine from Ontario, and the seafood from maritime provinces. This is the structure of China's safety supervision system for agri-foods. According to China Food Safety Law, the, safe, the Food Safety Commission has the Food Safety Supervision and Administration Department under the State Council supervise and administer the food production and marketing activities. Four ministries and the commissions undertake work related to food safety in accordance with this law and the functions and duties 
prescribed by the State Council. National Health Commission is responsible for organizing and conducting risk monitoring and assessment for food safety. Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Affairs is responsible for supervision and administration of quality and the safety of edible agricultural products. State administration for market regulation is responsible for comprehensive coordination of food safety in supervision and management. General Administration of Customs, we call the GAC, is responsible for food import and export supervision. The local government is responsible for the supervision and administration of food safety within their respective administrative areas. So very complicated. Four, depart uh, four ministries have their different functions. Now, let's take a look at how these government authorities actually do their regulatory work. This is a flowchart for the main import steps of agri-food products exporting to China. The first four steps belong to pre-import access to ensure whether the specific product is qualified to export. Other steps belong to inspection or entry or border to verify whether the specific product meets all the requirements of the Chinese regulation and the standards. Back to the first step of flowchart, meet access requirements. The exporting product must be listed in the entry list of the exporting country issued by GAC, General Administration of Customs. Currently, there are eight categories of every food products needed to check before exporting. And for Canada, except bird nest, seven categories, including meat, dairy, aquatic products, casing for sausage, plant-based food, traditional Chinese medicine, and the bee products have several products allowed to access Chinese market. So for the detailed list of specific products, it can be checked through the official website of China Customs. GSC custom uh, website. According to Article 96 of the Food Safety Law, overseas production enterprises exporting every food to China shall be registered with GSC. So the second step is to check whether the manufacturer is in the approval list of overseas production enterprises issued by GAC. I think here we should maybe recommend it by the government to the Chinese customs. And then there is a lot of procedures for the application. This is the current status of approved Canadian production, production enterprises. The figure means the number of approved Canadian production enterprises. I think the chart, yeah, yeah, you can, you can see. Too, too quick, yeah. So we have a lot of enterprises registered in, in GAC, China, so that we can export. According to Chapter 4 of the Food Safety Law, 
state administration for market regulation exercise strict supervision and control over special foods such as healthcare food, formula food for special medical purposes, and the formula food for infants and the young children. So health food using new raw materials or imported for the first time, as well as formula foods for special medical purposes shall be approved by state administration for market regulations. So you know which department ministries you should go, right? The first Canadian infant formula milk powder enterprises now has been established in Canada, in Ontario, right? We are now assisting them to get the enterprise approval and the products formula approval from state administration for market regulations. For genetically modified food, GMO, right? Which contains, there are several regulations issued by Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Affairs for product approval before exporting. So the food which contains GMO, you should go to be approved by the agricultural department in China. Due to special events such as ep epidemics and the environmental pollution, the GAC customs will dynamically adjust the list of prohibited products through temporary notification, especially for food of animal origin or plant-based foods. Therefore, before exporting, it needs to be checked to make sure the origin of products is not on the list of the banned countries. These are some notices related to inspection and the quarantine for temporary notification of warning prohibited entering objects and products prohibited from some countries on customs website. But it is pretty in Chinese, right? <laughs> if your specific products are complying with all the above four steps, congratulations. That means they are allowed to access when your products arrived at any of China port, you may face new challenge during inspection or entering at the border. Quality of your food, food additives, and food related products, such as packages, package material, labels, or certificates, etc shall conform to the national food safety standards of China. Otherwise, unqualified cargoes will be returned, destroyed, or treated technically. I think the, a lot of uh, exporters, they meet this kind of uh, problem, you know, when in the, at the destination, they have found that the customs will also take written check. If found in this following province, I think it's really, you will take a lot of loss, right? You know, this is the, the typical uh, problems they face. And also a lot of certificates that cannot uh, com conform to the standards or requirements. When your specific products selling at local markets, local food safety supervision and administration departments may perform routine inspection or random checks to ensure there is no food safety hazard or potential risk. The enterprise is the first responsible person of product 
quality. So the manufacturers and the relevant trading parties have the obligations to bear the risks that may be caused by the quality of imported agri-food products. Several common quality issues of food safety hazard or potential risk, just uh, yeah, on the slide. From now on, I would like to introduce two popular product certification. One is China Organic Certification, and the other is China Compulsory Certification. For the organic certification, you may have a question. If my products already have certified as Canadian organic products, can I sell my products in China as organic? My answer is definitely no. As there is no mutual recognition agreement signed yet between China and Canada, so only when your specific product has been certified as Chinese organic product, then can it be declared as organic products to the customs and also sold in Chinese market. Along with the increasing demands of organic products in China, more and more farms and factories apply for organic certification. On this chart, you can see the growth in quantity of China organic certification. And from this growth, you can feel the demands of organic food from Chinese consumers. So after your products have achieved Chinese organic certification, then you can apply China organic logo on your products. Each logo has a unique code by which consumers can verify the authenticity from the government web website. Your interest of certification could be well protected. And also in this way, your organic products will be known to the public and also greatly valued. You may ask how to achieve what is the difference between the China organic certification with Canada organic certification? Is it difficult to achieve? General speaking, the basic requirements of organic certification between Canada and China are the same. Canadian auditors focus on the sampling and the testing. Meanwhile, Chinese auditors more focus on the records of organic condition. So for achieving Chinese organic certification, it depends on how much evidence you can show to indicate the farm having been operated and maintained in the organic condition in the past seven years. If your products already achieved a Canada or US organic certification, more evidence to provide, less time to achieve. We can provide professional advisory opinion to assist you at this point. Here shows an actual example. Last year, we assist a Quebec soybean processor to achieve their China organic certified with the shortest duration, just two months. They have already got Canadian organic certification before. We know the route, how to transfer and make it in a very efficient way. Next, I would like to talk a bit about China compulsory certification. It is in the industrial area, I think. It is a compulsory. Just like the CSA, I think, maybe some industrial products for the safety. 
since September 1st, 2009, com China compulsory certification, we call the triple C certification, has been implemented. Currently, there are 21 categories, 137 kinds of products involved. Most of them are industrial products and equipment related to the safety of electrical appliance, traffic and communications, civil fire protection, and other consumer products. Depending on the product specifications, one of three methods can be available for applying triple C certification. Site audit plus testing by a third party is the most common one for triple C. CQC as a CCIC certification center, another brand, is a qualified third party certification body designated by CNCA to conduct CCC triple C certification in China and overseas. On some of the products, self-decoration plus testing on the GB standard can also be available for applying triple C certification. Our engineers and auditors can provide a detailed consulting report to verify which certification method is suitable for your specific products. To list all the relative testing requirements with Chinese standard. To review your existing test reports, whether they are still available, or to arrange the test under Chinese GB standards within the shortest time, we can do more for helping your products to obtain triple C certifications. I'm very glad to inform you that a mutual recognition agreement recently has been signed by Qingdao Customs Technology Center and the CCIC Canada. This agreement not only provides a broader development space for our service capabilities and the product, and the product, product line forming in agricultural and the food industry, but also takes a step forward serving the Canadian exporters to reduce the trade risk and mitigate the technical barriers and accelerating the import and export of every food products between China and uh, Canada. CCIC certificates now is widely recognized by China supervision and administration departments in China, such as China Customs, GAC, the State Administration for Market Regulation, SAMR, -S -A sorry, and etc. CCIC Canada and Qingdao Customs Technology uh, Center carried out technical consultations and program research and eventually formulated a standard consistent data traceable and risk controllable solutions. We are now assisting our clients to export chilled meat and hope that we could ex execute this project in agricultural products like wheat, soybeans, canola seeds, and etc. Yeah. As for mutual recognition agreement signed by both parties, CCIC pre-shipment inspection results of sampling, testing, and the quantity on eight cat categories of every food products, wheat, peas, canola, flaxseed, oats, dairy products, meat, and uh, seafood will be recognized by Qingdao Customs. That is to say, it will not only for the trade parties to ensure that their products are qualified for Chinese market, but also for the time-sensitive products, 
such as chilled meat, seafood, and dairy products to leave more sales period. If you are interested, we can discuss a very comprehensive solution for your specific products. So due to the limited time in this webinar, I just give a very brief pictures of China import process with laws and regulations. You may still have lots of questions and faced with problems needed to solve. Here, there are some frequent questions we are asked daily by many Canadian exporters before. I would say, of course, we have all your required answers. We are not only familiar with Chinese regulations, laws and standards, but also we understand all the concerns of trade parties in the process. That's why we can always pertinently provide you a unique comprehensive one-stop solution for any specific product. Based on our previous experience and the wide range of CCIC quality service, our service solution covers all the links of trade between Canada and China. On this platform, we have assisted our Canadian farms, manufacturers, processing plants and trading companies to export their products to China. CCIC top quality mark scheme have introduced Canadian quality products together with their brands to Chinese customers. CCIC certificates have been recognized by Chinese authorities at all levels to verify the different overseas quality products. And the CCIC cloud traceability system have provided millions of queries for commodity information directly to Chinese consumers. So please contact us once you have any doubts on the trading with China and we are willing to assist you to achieve your goal in the growing Chinese market. Here, yeah, CCIC Canada, we have uh, it was established in 2004 uh, with headquarters in Vancouver. We, have, we almost cover our business in the whole territory of Canada. Uh, we are accredited as ISO IEC 17020 by CNAS. And we are also an authorized third party service provider by CTC in Canada for grains of sampling and grading. We are also an inspection body of CSAW 178.1 by Canadian, Canadian Welding Bureau, CWB. So thank you very much for your attention. We would like to have some time to answer your questions. And also, I will invite my colleague, Henry, to join together to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Lee. I, lots of fantastic information in this presentation. Um, super clear and uh, extremely informative. Uh, thank you very, very much. So that, uh, that concludes the official presentation. Um, we're happy, as, as uh, Ms. Lee says, to take a Q&A session now. Um, of course, it's down in your bottom of your screen in the Q&A. Um, so right now, I think a lot of people are taking a lot of information in, maybe thinking about what kind of questions you want to ask. Uh, maybe it's also that, um, you know, you need to think a little bit about what, what questions you have for CCIC and will follow up after this session. Um, but I think for now, um, Ms. Lee, I wanted to ask you just myself, you talked about having uh, offices across Canada and you're based in Vancouver, you and Henry and the team. Um, 
can you tell us a little bit about your structure across the country and uh, and, and I guess if, if you've got a, a seafood exporter on the east coast and you've maybe got someone in in, uh, in Saskatchewan with canola how what's their best if they, if they just want to start somewhere where's their best place to go uh, should they contact you directly get on the website or contact their local representative in their region we have a lot of, uh, we have a representative in each province, like in, in, uh, in uh, Toronto, right? And also Alberta, and also in Quebec City, in, in Montreal. So I think uh, uh, if you can, if you have questions, you, of course you can go direct to our website and uh, we have a context information for that. And then if, if we think it's possible, we can go direct to you. Uh, so I think uh, the business will be very, service will be available to all the uh, customer, customers. That, that's great. And also um, CCIC for our, our uh, participants want you to know, we, CCI is a, we're, is, a, is a wonderful member of the CCBC and we have close contacts obviously with Henry and the team and Ms. Lee. So if, uh, if anyone on this, uh, this uh, webinar wants to contact us directly as well, we can help facilitate uh, that connection to the team. Um, so, so that's great. Uh, I also had a question from a participant who is looking into PCM herbs wants to know about how to apply for these licenses and maybe can you suggest what specific departments they they need to approach? Uh, for the PCM, uh, my understanding is for traditional Chinese uh, medicines, right? So if for the traditional uh, medical, uh, Chinese medicals, uh, I have checked the list uh, and my members, there is about seven to eight uh, products have been approved for assessing to China market. So uh, I think this company can just check the uh, website of GAC and to, uh, to check whether uh, these specific products are, com uh, are in this list. So if the product is in this list, then the products can be assessed into China. Otherwise, it needs to be uh, to apply for the approval by GAC or by uh, SAMR. Thanks, that's, that's great, Henry. And I, I know that a uh, uh, businesswoman who had talked to me a bit about this, um, I'll, I'll, I'll be following up with her as well uh, to, to take that forward if she has any further questions. Um, and another question I, I was curious about is your organic, um, your organic line. It seems to me there's a growing interest in organics in China. Um, and Ms. Liu, you, you said that there was a company in Quebec that managed to get two months uh, approval on this. Um, are you seeing a rise in interest in Canada uh, of organics and uh, in, in trying to get exported to, to, uh, to China? And, and uh, what would be maybe your biggest piece of advice to, to maybe make that two month uh, approval? What, what, was the, what was the secret ingredient this company had in, in making that, that, that uh, approval be so quick? Uh, that is because that enterprise, they already have Canadian organic certifications. So if they have the organ uh, Canadian organic certification and uh, we can assess them to prepare the documentation and the records, uh, so to follow with the uh, Chinese standards, so it, it is easy for them to uh, get the certification of China organic certification in a very short period. That's great, Henry. Um... Thanks very much. I also have a, I have someone who's just written in. Um, I'd like to ask, what's the regulatory requirements for the food that is declared as self-use, uh, sorry, self-use samples, small batch? Should the exporter obtain testing results from CCIC? Uh, Ms. Lee or Henry, can you answer that one? For self-use samples, uh, so, for sales use examples, uh, I think no need for the testing result from CCIC because for the self use examples, you can declare to the customer and the customer uh, will be uh, using their procedure to determine whether they need to test or not. If no need test, uh, regularly I think is no need test for self use examples. But it's depending on, you can check with the uh, food whether it is in the banded list 
of Chinese, uh, Chinese customers. Great. Well, that's, that's pretty clear. Um, thanks, Henry. Uh, I've also got, uh, what is the procedure for exporting Canadian made makeup and beauty products? Is there, is there a, a, a workaround so products don't need to be tested on animals in China? That is a great question. But <laughs> on this topic, we are just discussing about the agri-food and the industry. We are not talking uh, about the makeup and the beauty products. Uh, CCIC also can help the clients to apply for Chinese makeup and beauty product certifications. And we have lots of experience on that. So I think for the detailed products, maybe the clients can contact with us to follow up. Great, that's, that's good to know. It sounds like you really are a one-stop shop over there. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, so uh, I think I, I'm thinking this may be the questions that we have for today, which is fine. We're getting near the end of our session. Um, but I think like, there's probably a lot of uh, people on the call who are um, thinking about uh, a little more complicated questions than maybe we can answer today. So I think it's what I just want to express is what a wonderful session this has been how informative i think this is for our participants and i i hope uh it's the start of many more with ccic and uh you certainly have i think in, in terms of preparing canadian uh, smes for the china market this presentation is is really the critical puzzle piece uh, of the of the pie so um i i just want to say um a huge gratitude to you, Ms. Lee and Mr. Zhu, for your excellent presentation today. And on behalf of the CCBC team, um, we'd like to thank you very much for your generous sponsorship of this webinar. Um, also, uh, thanks again to everyone who's joined us again today. We really appreciate your, your attendance. Uh, and as you probably all know, next week, August 12th, will be our next webinar on uh, supply chain management ensuring that you have the right products in the right places. Um, and the two remaining webinars in this series will cover protecting your IP, which will take place on August 20th and August 26th, how to use e-commerce to sell your product in China without even having to jump on an airplane, um, which these days not many of us are getting on airplanes, so it could be very useful. And just another reminder to all of all of the companies, uh, business people who have so far been attending all our sessions to date, you will receive a China Ready uh, certificate upon completion from the CCBC. Um, so, uh, of course, I am here. Our team at CCBC would love to hear from you. And of course, I know Ms. Lee and Henry and the team over there um, really are such phenomenal experts in this field. And, and we really kind of lean on them as, as a wonderful member to help our businesses in Canada thrive and really make it through and succeed in this, in this, um, in this process of getting exp getting your product exported to China. So, well, thank you again, uh, Ms. Lee and Henry. Super. Thank you for your for your wonderful presentation. Enjoy the rest of your day on the West Coast. And uh, to thank everyone, you very much. you're welcome. Thank, yeah. you. Hey, thank yeah. you so much. And to everyone listening in, thank you so much for taking time with us today. Uh, we really appreciate that. And I'll say goodbye. <laughs>